Uh, his initial quickness, um, his ability to be a team player. It's, um, clearly, he can't play in the game, but helping out the offense on the scout team, um, the individual drills, um, being one of the first guys to come give us a look. Um, so just a great team guy. I realize, uh, one more question for you. Uh, Jackson, I realize he plays a different position, but do you know anything about this game, what he'll bring now that he's committed? Uh, hopefully, hopefully being a lockdown corner. Hopefully being a lockdown corner. Um, don't really know. You have to ask T-Rob or, you know, one of the cornerbacks or even Kool-Aid. But hopefully he becomes, you know, another guy that can help us win. Into a game like this one, I mean, Michigan ran the ball against a good defensive line like Penn State 35 times in a row. Is that something that you guys are a little extra aware of, trying to change anything around on the defensive line to combat that? Uh, not really. I say just understand that they want to run the ball. Um, I feel like each and every team goal is to run the ball. If you can run the ball and be successful at it, why stop? So it's our job to stop the run, understand that, you know, they are a good running team. And just looking on film, you know, the reason why they were so successful in the run game and try to minimize that and understand how we can stop that. Uh, JJ, from a defensive line perspective, if you flush JJ out of the pocket, there's a chance that he can run, and he's done it a number of times this year. Is that something that you're all aware of and trying to, to prevent him from being able to get downfield? Of course. Um, the preparation and practice, understand that you have to have great contain, can't rush past the quarterback, got to understand that you have to contain him. And then on top of that, just everybody getting to the ball. Understand that we all have to get to the ball. It has to be 11 hats, um, tight mentality. Um, whether it be him having the ball or whether it be Blake Corum, just everybody has to fly to the ball. Running back room is a lot more than, than too deep. Is there anything that you guys have seen from guys like Benjamin Hall or, uh, or I know CJ Stokes is traveling for this game. Any, anybody passed down to an Edwards and Blake Corum that you guys are, are prepping for? Uh, I would say just prepping for, for us, prepping for the O-line, um, understand, you know, where they run counter or where they run split zone, whatever, you know, understand that how we how we supposed to fit it, fit it up, how we supposed to be successful against it, and just understand that it's going to start with us. It's going to start with D-line. It's going to start with the outside linebackers, that front seven, and stopping the run and making them try, trying to make them one-dimensional. This is the Michigan offensive line that dealt with a key injury to their right guard, Zach Zinner. What have you seen kind of about their ability to gel with one another, even with different map? different lineups, I should say. I mean, any great O-line, you don't just have, you know, if a guy goes down or, you know, you have to replace a guy, you have another guy going up. And they, it don't look like they lost the beat. So just understand that they still a great O-line unit, giving them respect that they, that we, they deserve. Understand that we have to go in there and, you know, change the way they think. You know, we have to impose their will because I'm pretty sure they have the same mindset, imposing their will with us. So as long as we do that, we'll be successful. Seen anything from Alex Orgy on film, the backup quarterback? He comes in a lot of running packages. Uh, I'll be honest with you, no. I'll be honest with you. But I mean, still we're gonna prepare. Um, we seen things that they do on film, um, and one of the good things the coaching staff is, you know, giving us a, a lot of great looks in practice. Um, the scout team quarterbacks is giving us great, great looks in practice. Um, each and every guy has been, you know, focused on giving us a great look because it's it, you know. Um, there's no tomorrow. After Monday, either we're going to have another game or our season is over. So we've been preparing, you know, we've been preparing just like that. On the scout team, who's a guy maybe you want to shout out who doesn't always get to make national headlines but is putting in the work just like a lot of other guys on your team? Uh, Ty Buckner. You know, it's a guy that, you know, a lot of people have a lot of things to say about him, but he's been a great team guy. You know, he's given us a great look on scout team. He gave us a great look on um, LSU um, as, you know, trying to simulate Jaden Daniels, but also just being a guy who, you know, still wants to um, be with this team and understand that's a common goal. You know, at the end of the day, if we, we win, each, each and every guy on that team gets a ring. So it doesn't matter, you know, who gets the shine, who gets the spotlight, but that's a guy that I want, you know, give a shout out to. Uh, game they fit on the sideline. I probably would, probably would step out. I probably, probably want to be comfortable. Um, 
But of course, you know, when I get off that bus, I'll be, you know, I'll really be stepping. But uh, probably something like Coach Saban, you know, uh, Alabama pullover, you know, some khakis with the with the Nike shoes. We call them the Springer 2000s because that's our um, equipment manager. But you know, something like that. Uh, I mean, every t I feel like every team has the goal to run the ball. Um, I feel like, you know, we put a lot of importance on them because they did, I heard my man say, you know, they ran against Penn State 35 times in a row. Um, so just understand that they really love to run the ball and it's our job to stop the run. Um, and that's the biggest thing, being a D-lineman here. You gotta stop that run. You ain't gonna touch the field if you can't stop the run. So just putting the importance in that in practice. So team run periods, um, good on good against the old line. You know we, it's like a, a heightened level of awareness of what we have to get accomplished. Um, but I feel like Georgia wanted to do the same thing. Auburn wanted to run the ball. Um, a lot of teams want to run the ball, but it's our job to stop that. What led to the success against Georgia? Uh, I would say we have the same mentality that there's no tomorrow. Um, I told guys that whole week, you know, it ain't nothing to give it all you got because after this you, you have a break, you know. It, everything that we wanted is right here in front of us. So give it all you got. I'm going to give it all I got. You know, a full week of preparation. I'm not going to take no reps off because at the end of the day, it's no tomorrow. If we don't do what we want to do on Monday, Season over. If we handle business, we got another game. We have a chance to play for a Natty. Joseph, Kevin still talked about your professionalism, how that's been a big part of the defense's success. Do you personally kind of where is that rooted in? Kind of where did you kind of get that sense of professionalism from? Uh, just seeing guys before me. <coughs> um, just seeing guys before me um, and understand that, you know, I'm the old head in their room, so. You know, I like to joke around and stuff like that, but also understand that it's a time to play and it's time not to. You know, when we step on that field, it's time to handle business. You know, we can joke around and laugh when we watch a film and stuff like that, but when we gotta get something done, we gotta get something done. And you know, it ain't gonna be, you know, all giggles that we don't, you know, accomplish what we wanna accomplish. And just understand that it's no tomorrow. Understand that, you know, everything that we want is right in front of us. We earned the right to be in this game and we gotta earn the right to be in the next game but all focus is on this game. You talk about being the uh, other statesman in the defensive line room. Uh, looking back on the beginning of the season to now, kind of what's that been like being that leader of that group and how those young guys have grown to this point? Uh, it's been a you know, crazy thing about it. everybody in that D-line room been there since January. So all the early enrollees, um, you know, guys like James Smith, Edric Hill, Hunter Osborne, and Jordan Renaud. And just bring them along. You know, you don't really see them on Saturdays, but they work each and every day. And when their time come, they're going to be prepared for it. And just showing them, trying to be an example of how things are supposed to be done, not only in practice, but in the games. You know, the expectations, understand the expectation of what it is to be a Bama D lineman. And just each and every week, just try to, um, you know, teach them something. As far as like, okay, you know, just because you're not on the field right now don't mean when you on the sidelines, you can't tell me what's going on because I can't see everything. So if you can tell me, okay, this is what the left guard doing or this is what the right guard, left tackle or center or the um, right tackle doing, you helping out. Each and, each and every guy has a role. Just because you're not physically affecting the game on the field doesn't mean that you can't help another guy out because at the end of the day, we all have the same goal and that's the win. You know how much you go up against some good on good in practice, but have you noticed it's pretty different when you're going up against, you know, 350 pound Tyler Booker, 360 Kate Proctor, things like that compared to maybe what the line has been in previous seasons? Shoot, the O line always been big. Y'all don't know, y'all remember um, Deontay Brown and Evan Neal and guys like that, like, and Landon, Landon Dickerson? Come yeah. on now. We're not talking like 250 <laughs> to 350, but still big guys. Yeah. Um, but I feel like, you know, just the fact that, you know, Coach Blue has them in the right 
plan. You know, they big, physical, but able to move with it. You know, it's not like they big and can't move with it and not athletic. JC is athletic. T Book is athletic. Jaden Roberts is a freak of nature. You know, um, Kaden, Kaden Proctor, you know, um, all them guys, you know, 300 plus, 320 plus, really. Um, so just, you know, each and every day we, we, um, we going good on good team run or anything. You know, it's a good barometer, you know, helping us get ready for the games. And you mentioned you're an old head on this defense, but that also means you've been around Coach Saban for a few seasons. You know, have you noticed he's relating to the team differently this year? And, you know, if so, why? I don't think he's been relaying anything different. I, see, I feel like he's still got that same fire and passion that he had since day one I've been here. Um, he's, still, he's still the same guy. Um, no more jokes this season? Oh, of course he got jokes. You know, it's just you, you never know when to laugh because he he says in a serious tone, you know, but um, but when he cracks he, he crack jokes, um, he, he loves what he does. You know, you can tell that. And I feel like, you know, there's no stopping him. You know, I don't see no end in sight. We were just talking to Dallas. He said that Will Anderson still reaches out to him. What's it been like to continue a relationship with a guy that, that was that talented after he's left Alabama? Uh... It's great because you you have somebody that you know is still paying attention, and still you know somebody that you can reach out to. Um, like a guy for me is Fedarian Mathis, you know, uh, somebody that I can easily reach out to, ask him any question. And he's you know just a phone call or a text away, and you know he's responding as far as you know being a person that can, you know, is still accessible, you know, and you can't say that about everybody, but you can say that about them. Kevin Steele's been through so many battles. Coached for a long time, coached a lot of defense. Um, how valuable is it to have a resource like him that you can go to every single day? Uh, he's a guy that, you know, his wisdom is beyond anything that, you know, we can um, hear from anybody outside of um, Coach Saban. Um, just the hands-on approach that he brings. Um, I'm glad that he's here. You know, he's been a tremendous bright spot to this defense and has helped us um, be so successful as we are. Him and Saban are both older defensive-minded coaches. How different are they in practice? Or are they similar in more ways, or are they different? Uh, they both similar because they hop on, you know, they hop on you. Um, but you know, just understand that you know it's an expectation. He's been here before. He's he's won a ring here before, so he understands the expectation. The same thing with Coach Saban. He's never going to let us not live up to the expectation. You know, no matter what it is, it could be a Monday practice, which is. You know, we inspire the pass, or whether it could, it could be uh, Tuesday or Wednesday practice, which is the most physical days of the week for us. Um, he's always going to, you know, have an expectation that we have to live up to. Hey, Justin, you've been around a while. What's different about the personality of this team compared to maybe the last two? Um, I would say just we became closer. You know, we became closer. Um, just understand that, you know, after that week two game, we felt like everybody didn't believe in us. Uh, a lot of people lost hope in us. Um, and even the next week, you know, USF, it was still people saying that, you know, this team isn't going to be where we are now. Um, and actually, we had a team meeting the day after that, that Sunday after that game. And it was just a, a player led meeting. And we spoke our mind. Everybody got everything off their chest, and it made us closer. And I feel like that's something that. You know, since I've been as far as a player-led meeting after a, a devastating two weeks because, you know, we lost against Texas, then we didn't play our best against USF, I felt like that made us closer and we knew who the, the head man, you know, the starring guy at quarterback was going to be, and he rallied us all together. Is, it, is that something that was missing maybe the last two seasons? Uh, I wouldn't say that. You know, sometimes the things just don't fall how you want to fall. Um, you know, we ended up losing Georgia in the um, national championship. Um, and then last year, just losing, lost two games on, you know, really the last play and, you know, things just didn't go your way and, you know, mental errors in the game. But just understand that we, we, we try to capitalize on that, um, understand mistakes of the past and not try to recreate them. How quickly did you guys kind of realize Milro's your guy? I was talking to Kool he said, we go where he goes. Talk about that meeting after USF. When were you like, this is our quarterback? Uh, when, we, when, when the coaching staff um, made the decision and how he was vocal, um, a vocal leader. Um, every Thursday we have like a, a player-led meeting after special teams and 
you know, he'll stand up and he'll say something to get us going. And, you know, when he talk, everybody listen, you know, and we, we know everything that he been through, you know, it's been publicized and, you know, and we seen it from the spring to now. <coughs> his growth, his maturation, and just how much of a leader he is. We asked a few of the guys yesterday and today that you guys are a fourth and 31 away from not sitting here right now. How often do you think about that game and that moment specifically? I try not to think about that because I think I lost a couple years of my life out there. <laughs> but, um, I'll be honest with you, um, sitting on sideline, well, I wasn't sitting on sideline. Standing on sideline, I was like, man, everything is for nothing. Like, you know, next week, SC Championship don't matter because we, we won't be in the playoffs. But um, I was like, man, did he catch it? Was it a push off? Nah, he, uh, you know, it was no flag. I was like, man, that, that, that's probably the greatest play in the Iron Bowl history right there. So, um, the Auburn fans might push back on that statement. So, so, so what, what would they say? Six? <laughs> we don't Come say on. that around here, right? Nah, nah. <laughs> nah, but um, it was a great play. It's something that you, had, you just had to be there. You had to be watching. You know, watching it again on YouTube, don't do it justice. You had to be in the moment. Um, and I just feel like, you know, it's just one of the – one of the things to remember from a great season that hasn't, you know, that hasn't ended, you know, just yet with what we want to do, but um, just a great moment, a great moment that brought our team together and, you know, just understand that it was a great moment. But after that, you know, 24 hours, we celebrated. We understood it was a new mission. Um, it was Georgia and, you know, we went on to handle business, but understand that, you know, the focus is this game, you Does know. It feel kind of bittersweet that you're sitting here right now. I mean, there was a lot of question about FSU being here, and then you guys win that game against Auburn, beat the number one team. Could be a fairy tale ending here for you. Yeah, but, you know, first thing first, we got to go out there on Monday and, you know, prove it, you know, prove prove everything that, you know, the reason why the committee put us here, um, everything that we went through this season, um, just understand that, you know, the end goal isn't there just yet. You know, it's still one team standing in our way, and we have to go out there on Monday and prove, you know, prove people right that 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 believe that we we supposed to be in this situation, uh, and you know, prove the people that didn't believe, prove them wrong. How big was that confidence-wise beating a team like Georgia that could potentially, if they won, be the number one seed here? Now they're out, and you guys are in. Uh, I mean. I feel like our level of focus was all about them. Um, after Auburn, um, we understood after that week two loss, we still controlled our own destiny to be able to go play Georgia. And we, honestly, I, I wanted them to be undefeated to that point. I wasn't looking at, man, I hope somebody knocks them off or anything like that, because I, I wanted to knock them off. Um, I wanted to, you know, end that win streak and prove people why we deserve to be here. And I told guys, man, give everything you got that whole week of practice and every, everything you got in that game. You know, I was exhausted after that game. But I was like, man, I'm going to give everything I got because to be in this moment right here, you can't dream of it. You know, it's something that you have to go and take. You have to earn the right to be here. And that's something that I felt like we proved being the number one team in the nation at that point. And something that, you know, we, we have to prove on Monday too. What's the differences between him and Coach Saban in practice and then in game? I know he's up in the booth, but you get on their phone and you start talking. Uh, man, y'all should see the pregame speeches that Coach still give. You know, if y'all, I don't think you know, it'd be a lot of censoring. You know, <laughs> if y'all found that. No problem. You're awesome, man. Thank you. 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 Thank